Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic and today we're going to be looking at finishing off this beetle. So this beetle here is a beetle I started building during the 9 hour beetle challenge. However, uh, at the time I was working with very very limited tools and it is also my first ever beetle. So probably wasn't the uh, greatest idea to take on this challenge as a very first attempt at a beetle. But here we are. Uh, so this is what I managed to get done in just a little over nine hours. It is actually a full outer shell for a beetle. However, none of the electronics were actually working when we last saw this thing. So that's what we're going to do today. We are going to bolt in, of course, an Arduino module and a brand new H-bridge that I got, which is a two amp H-bridge. There's a lot of uh, wasted space down the bottom here, but that's fine. We're just going to sit that end up this way and actually just screw the motors directly into these terminal blocks. I'm not sure how well it's going to hold, but at this point in time, I really just want to get this guy up and running for this month's fight night, and then I want to redesign the entire thing from uh, the ground up. So this is a, a kind of proof of concept for the EDF all the way out the back here. Um, and then of course in here, we're also going to add the 0.7 amp hour uh, 3S battery that we saw in the overvolting um, video that I did earlier and we've still got the old top plate. So one thing I do want to quickly just try out with you guys is to see how much this thing weighs because uh, it's supposed to be 1.3 kilograms and somehow I don't think I've made that so we're just going to uh, dump this guy down on the scale. I'm going to add in the ESC that I forgot and the top plate. And that's only getting us to about 900 grams, it seems like. So what we're also going to do is we're going to add in a paint scraper. We're going to cut off the paint scraper kind of down by the handle here, and we're going to bolt that in underneath to uh, give us a bit of a, a more attacking wedge that we can use to lift in underneath people. So let's just sit the whole paint scraper on top and see what happens. Yeah, so that's just over a kilo, which means I still have 300 grams I could jam into this thing, but as you can see, I don't have anywhere to jam it into. This is quite a small frame for a beta weight. Uh, so anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to start with the electronics and then we're going to work on this paint scraper blade and getting that ready to go.
And so we've kind of actually failed here, uh, and in a number of different ways. So as you kind of saw in that little time lapse, the electronics don't actually fit in here. Right now, I've pulled the battery out, but with the battery in, I don't have enough room to get this ESC in, and I really can't put the ESC anywhere else because otherwise it's going to interrupt the airflow to the EDF out the back. Um, on top of all of that, plugging this stuff into 12 volts, I actually managed to fry the regulator on this Arduino here. So this Arduino is just a, a cheap Chinese one or a cheap Chinese clone of an Arduino. And Arduino voltage regulators are supposed to go up to 12 volts. This one, however, died. Um, so I can power the Arduino via the five volt pin that I've got in here and it powers up fine, but if I try and power it through the raw line, which means through the 12 volts uh, in, it just dies and it doesn't actually turn on. So that means the regulator is busted and broken. And also, even when I do power the Arduino with five volts and also power the board, the um, receiver module on the back here has been fried. I think because this module is supposed to, this little power module is supposed to take five volts and turn it into 3.3. And when I pumped it with 12 volts, it tried to do 3.3 uh, but could not and then killed this chip out the back here. So lots and lots of stuff to be learned from this little experiment. And that says, okay, things fail all the time when you go through and build stuff. That's just part of engineering and the engineering process. Uh, what you then do is you learn from those mistakes and you go again. So this whole thing is actually going to be rebuilt now. I need to have more space to jam all my electronics in. I think we're going to discard this uh, two amp speed controller because it is just too big. It's just huge. So I'll probably do some testing on these motors and see if I can run them on uh, 1.2 amps. I probably can. So that means we can shrink this board down significantly. We'll obviously have to put more electronics in to protect that Arduino uh, in the future. And then, yeah, build a bigger shell. So we've actually got enough room to fit a battery and ESCs and everything else in here. So, yeah, there we go. Unfortunate, but that's the way things go. Uh, so keep an eye out on this channel and there will be a version two of this thing uh, where we actually use CAD this time to design the thing. So that was one of the other big issues with this was because it was done in the nine hour challenge, I couldn't use any CAD software and I couldn't 3D print any of the pieces. I mean, I 3D printed a piece after I realized I failed the nine hour challenge, but realistically, I need to scrap the whole lot and go back and start again. Um, these motors in here, I might even throw these motors out and use some proper beta weight motors. Uh, but we'll see how that design falls out in the wash. So there you go. I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. And, you know, failures are part of this whole process. So I'll see you in the next video.